Yeah, here, yeah, yeah, wait him, him can go. Yes, get him out. Yeah. Tell him, tell him for me. Yeah, yeah, but go up on the front. Tell him. Huh? Tell him to go up on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go up on the front. Yeah. Too far.
sitting there right there. <laughs> uh oh, but me want to see it. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
सकते हो
Video. No, in time. Oh, I hear you. Oh, yeah, no,
the self support.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning. We are met on this lovely day to give tribute and to pay recognition to a fallen star in the person of Mr. Russell Hammond. Usually we are very punctual at the start. But we recognize the traffic problems and challenges. And so we have allowed for a few minutes delay. But those few minutes have now been exhausted. And so we will be moving right into the program as is printed. We will have the tributes now. Having heard the lovely voice of Mr. Bunny Rose for a number of minutes, singing those songs that are so well. There are not many tributes, three, and we're going to be having them in the order that they are printed. The first from the former Prime Minister, the most honorable Bruce Gordon, and then on behalf of the family, Mr. Charles Latimer Deer, and on behalf of the Lodge, the District Grand Lodge, Worshipful Brother, Right Reverend, Right Worshipful Brother Thomas Smith. It is after these tributes that we have the remembrance to be read by Mr. Blaster Leslie. I invite us now to be attentive as we listen to the tributes. First, from the former Prime Minister, the most honorable. Rose Gordon. Especially those of you who 
work closely with it. Can attest to his passion for serving him. He had an empathy, a love for people. Nothing brought him greater satisfaction than helping someone, seeing someone in a better position because of the intervention that he might have been able to make. I remember the Minister of Construction, I remember the strategy with which he made representation on behalf of the people that he represented. But politics is not what defines Russell. As you know, he was a very successful businessman. And again, part of his assets as a businessman was a kind of strong personal relationship that existed between him and his employees. But business is neither what defines What is I for to is who he was, what he was, the kind of person that he was, the principles by which he lived, the goodness that he enjoyed. If Rosal was your friend, you couldn't find greater loyalty and sincerity.
to the great man, my father, Rosa Ramon Bowles, and how his legacy will forever live on. My father, a family man, a father to Kevin, Caitlin, James, myself, grandpa to four beautiful girls, loving husband to Susan, brother to Sissy, Jennifer, and the nine other predeceased siblings, uncle to many, including Brian, Dana, Bradley, Charissa, and Chucky, just the name of him. And of course, cousin to so many, the Hammonds, the Gears, Chambers, Freitas, and several more family tree branches that continue to grow to marriage. It would take every finger and toe in this church to call the relatives that he was so dearly blessed to have. Russell Hammond, the family man, was also a teacher. He taught many people to appreciate a good story and a laugh heartily. He loved giving jokes and making people laugh. He taught a lesson of on-the-job ethics, working for a common good, loving your fellow man, especially strangers in need, and the importance of loving family and being there for family. I can easily tell you about our conversations that grown many, or how he introduced me to the business, or how he became even closer over the last years of his life, but for me, it's the childhood memories that form the unbreakable bond that we had, and that is what I'll share with you today. The many lessons learned, the last had, the memories that will never be forgotten. He taught me that if you're going to do something, do it good or don't do it at all. This I learned from a tender age. The first time he told me to wash his mind, I really ran over this for me. I was excited. I began this task until I realized how hard it was. And so I used my height as an excuse not to wash the room for the man. Now, for people in the party, if you have any problem, see you because I'm alright. No, imagine back then. My father came outside and expected to leave and asked me about the roof. When I told him I couldn't reach, my dear dad went inside for a drink straight for me to stand on and instructed me to wash it over and said to me, if you're going to do something, do it good or don't do it at all. He thought and enforced that the color of my belt should match the color of my shoes and socks. And never you made the mistake when you see it do it otherwise. When I go back in the house to change it. Going to school was not a no shame. For Kelly, Kelly, James, myself. In this particular instance, he once took me to school while a flash of warning was taking place. Upon hearing that was went on the radio asking, hey, don't hear what's going on. He turned and said, her, whether snow, rain, or shine in Jamaica, you're going to school. Upon getting to school, I was there with a handful of teachers and one other student who happened to live next door. The teachers told him it was okay, Mr. Hammond, take him back home. He responded, find something teaching him. <laughs> teachers and guests of students leave. He only wanted to be back home that day before children. <laughs> My father was a stern parent, but let me tell you, he was an even more loving parent. Seeing and feeling his presence so ever strong in my life, I once asked him, how come you're always here to pick me up and take me to school while I go into the other daddy's doing this? He responded that it wasn't just about picking me up or taking me to school, but it was the time and our conversations in the car and in church. It was at this point that I never took a car ride with my dad for granted. And for any of you in here who has ever been on a drive with him, especially to one from Kingston, you know the character my father was. He would laugh to their face tired. His love and sense of being protective of his family knows no bounds. One summer vacation, I was visiting my home in New York. I really can't remember what if I developed a sort of fear of flying or I knew it was real time to leave. But something led me to tears and I refused to travel. My father, learning of my fragile state, jumped on the next available flight. He came to see me, got my confidence up, made me feel safe and comfortable. We were on our way back to Jamaica. In my mind and heart, 
คุณอาการสอนเป็นอย่างไรหมายความว่าเราสื่อสารกับ love and peace ยิ่งเราต้องมี love his God his family and his business for people in general he was there to assist anybody in whatever small way he went out of his way to assist people in his role as a justice of the peace nonetheless he was always objective and displayed the utmost integrity everything that he did my dad taught me the importance of family and trust me he was the glue of hearts he taught me the importance of hard honest work he says that his father had a saying if you want to strive you wake at five when you have strength you wake at seven Rastafari lost his father when he was at the tender age of 10 years old. This led him to become the man of the house very quickly, a task in which he engaged and made his late father proud. My father has been in business since 1974. He's been working for years before that. Even when the odds and hardships of business were stacked against him, he persevered. And when he came to each store, he would let you know. Give God thanks, and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. There are experiences I do wish I would have been granted the opportunity to share with my father. And I do speak on behalf of all my siblings and the family. But we must remember that God knows this. So many lessons, so little time. So I leave you with this. My dad taught all of us something. Live, love, laugh. Be kind, be humble, to be genuine and sincere. Lessons for a lifetime of peace and happiness. These lessons will stay with me and all of his family, who are now left to make sure his legacy forever lives on. Thank you. Respect our families, 
the laws of our land, reach out a helping hand to those in need, and mentor those coming behind so that we can leave this place a little better than we found it. Like in any gathering of humans, some of us are exceptional in some areas, and some are exceptional in all areas. Russell of Greenham was one of those exceptional in all areas. He was initiated into Freemasonry on the 3rd of May, 1979, making this his 43rd year of dedication to his beloved craft. His ability to excel thrust him into leadership, and his mother lodge, the Hope Lodge, number 2813, whose home is right here in Savannah Lamar, proudly sent their beloved Russell to the heights of leadership in the District Grand Lodge of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. During his time, he served as Assistant District Grand Master and Second District Grand Principal in the Craft and Royal Lodge. He served his time with distinction and has left an indelible mark on the history of this district. One of the things that we as Masons try our best to live up to, so that when we are summoned from this sublunary abode, it can be said that we have lived respected and died regretted. Russell Hammond, without fear of contradiction, has lived respected and died regretted. On behalf of a grateful district, we honor his memory. Rest in peace, my brother and friend. Another way to characterize Russell 
is to declare that he was all things to all men, and I believe the gentleman prior to me said just as much with respect to his work in the lodge. And he was an enemy of none. That is to say, regardless of race, color, creed, and especially political party affiliation, he was always willing and even eager to establish and maintain lifelong relationships and friendships without reservation or hesitation. He was impartial when choosing friends and would eagerly establish a lasting and loyal relationship as long as the individual was of good, was of good and sound character. Some of us may wonder how this man born into an ordinary home, occupied by a normal salt of the earth individuals, could have developed into this outstanding personality. To answer this question, we have to pay tribute to his late father, Mr. James William Hammond, and his mother, Miss Sylvia Eyre, who were jointly responsible for bringing him into this world. And so he came as a bundle of joy into their lives on February 16th, 1951. And he was born in Pontent, district in the parish of Hannibal. Russell was the 11th of 12 children in his family and was thus raised with a feeling of security as he was always surrounded by a lot of family members. His formative years were spent between Hannibal and Kingston during which time he attended Morrison Preparatory School and Kingston College, respectively. Though he was an unrepentant pacifist, Russell had an amazing fighting spirit. And those of us who are here would know that when I said Russell had a fighting spirit, he was never somebody to engage in a physical fight. But he would fight life, he would fight challenges. That's the kind of fighting spirit that we know about. And we also know that in a real sense the pressures of life often took him close to the edge, especially in his younger days, more so because he lost his father in June of 1961 when he was only 10 years old. Most of us have lost our fathers at some point or the other, but very few of us lose a dad. But he was a fighter, and he never, ever gave up. After leaving high school, Russell worked as a young man in Montego Bay at Pan American Airlines and Air Jamaica. The experience being at these two institutions were invaluable and held lifelong benefits for him. And so, in 1971, Russell ventured into the world of business at the very tender age of 20 years old. Can I say that again? In 1971, Russell ventured into the world of business at the very tender age of 20 years old. And there he established a patent business along with a tailor chair rental operation in the city of Montego Bay. Thus, Hammond's pastries was born. And if you wonder about the friendship with Russell, it's because of the party in Montego Bay. I was one of his first customers. Like most businesses in their infancy, the commercial operations provided serious challenges in a very hostile economic environment. And to his credit and the town's favor, he decided in 1974 to relocate his business operations to this town. Here he enjoyed early success, and this was further embellished by his additional success at the matrimonial altar when he asked Miss Donna Miller to become his wife. The union thrived, and his life and business thrived. But life is not without its moments, however, and so very sadly, he lost his loved and cherished mother. November 1st, 1987. During the intervening years, Russell demonstrated that he was the consummate community man who attended weddings, football matches, social events, 
and a lot of funerals, whether politically motivated or not. Russell had a number of passions, and this was accentuated by his courtship and marriage to his wife Susan in the year 2002. And that union continued until his recent denials. Beyond his passion and love for wife, children, and other family members, I suspect that the large Freemasonry and the game of dominance took pride of place in his preferences. Notwithstanding the aforementioned passions and interests, Russell was very committed to his business, and he cared deeply for the welfare of his staff, customers, and other associates. He was always advocating for fellow businessmen, businesses in general, and had a deep-rooted interest in the short, medium, and long-term development of this town of South Bernard. Not surprisingly, Russell Hammond and Hammond Space Plus Limited have left an indelible mark on the town of Savannah Bar and indeed the country of Jamaica as a whole. This culminated a few years ago in Hammond Space Plus being declared by Jamaica Flower Mills Limited to be the Bond King for having made the best tasting Easter bomb for that year. Not sure how many of us know that. But this man, our friend, was in fact declared as Bon King for the island of Jamaica. Among his other attributes, Russell was an active justice of the peace, a leading member of the Chamber of Commerce, a past executive member of the Arena Football Club, a past member and president of the Rotary Club of Savannah Lamar, and the list goes on and on. His church membership went beyond occupying a seat in the pews, as he was very committed and active at his home church at St. Saviour's Anglican Church to Chester, Ramble, for many years. In later years, he transferred his membership to this church, St. George's Anglican Church, where he distinguished himself in service to his church and his God in the usual outstanding matter. Here he remained an active member of the church management committee up to the time of his passing. Russell's passion and commitment to serve his community culminated in his being elected to serve the people of the then Central West Holland constituency as their member of parliament from 1983 to 1989. In that role, he not only served with distinction but he was a true people's representative by serving the interests of all constituents and members. And again, I emphasize without reference to party affiliation. This was certainly a man of whom it could be said he walked with kings and still retained the common touch. Over the past year or so, Russell was troubled by a number of debilitating medical conditions, which led ultimately to his being hospitalized in early November of this year. The community prayed, the community prayed, everyone prayed. Russell fought valiantly, and together with the doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals, his wife, children, sisters, other family members, and friends, Every human effort was made to save his life, but it was not to be. On the night of Friday, December 2nd, 2022, Russell succumbed to his illnesses and went to sleep in this world for the last time. It is our prayer that God in his mercy will comfort Russell's family members and friends, in particular, Suzanne, Kevin, Kirk. Caitlin, James, Sissy, Jennifer, grandchildren, several nieces and nephews, and a host of cousins, friends, and other loved ones. While on earth, Russell was duly recognized by the government of Jamaica in the year 2016 for his power of contribution to business and community life over many years to the nation where he earned the designation Order of Distinction Officer Class. 
Now he has been called to higher service where I am confident he will wear the more distinguished designation GFS. And that stands for good and faithful servant. And that is reserved for those to whom the Lord will say, Well done, good and faithful servant. We can be confident of this because, Russell, you have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. Now there is in store for you the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to you on that day, and not only to you, but to all who have longed for his appearing. May his soul rest in peace, and may light perpetual shine upon him. I thank you.
Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus.
Psalm 66, Psalm 46, we read alternatively by verses. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Be still there and know that I am God. 
exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. from Revelation 7, verses 9 to 17. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kingdoms, and people and tongues stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sitteth upon the throne, and on stood round above the throne and above the elders and before the beast, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of these elders answered, saying unto him, What are these which are arrayed in white room? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, go notice. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The word of the Lord.
disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where we are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O Lord. Friends, as we need to worship God in the face of death, I extend sympathies to the family of our deceased brother, Russell, to his wife, Susan, to his children, grandchildren, his siblings, and other relatives and friends. Death is something we all expect, yet the knowledge of it and that it will happen doesn't make us able to deal with it any better when it comes and our loved ones are departed from us. We want to assure the family of our love, prayers and support as they go through this difficult period. As we meet, we thank God for Russell, for his commitment to country, to people, to community and nation building in so many ways, which we have heard this morning. As a church, we thank God for his commitment to Christ and his church for his involvement and contribution to the church, not only here at St. George's, but in other places where he served. He served as a member of the church committee and as a representative to the synod of the church, the decision-making body. We trust that the life he lived will be a source of inspiration and comfort to the members of the family and to all of us who knew him as we mourn his passing. Let us pray. Gracious God, the source of all life, to whom light and darkness are but one, 
be present to those who mourn at this time. And in the face of them, speak to us that we may be strengthened to live for you and each other. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For my text, I have chosen the words from our second reading from the book of the Revelation. A reading from verse 9. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude which no one could count. From every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. As we know, friends, the book of the Revelation is not a book many will read or get very far in reading as the symbols, the grotesque images, and language in general can be confusing. Some search the book in the hope of determining when the end of the world will come. Yes, it is a book that speaks to the end. It speaks of the death of many who suffered martyrdom for their faith in Jesus Christ. More importantly, it speaks of the end of all suffering, pain, disease, sickness, and death itself, and of new life. The eternal life. John, on the Isle of Patmos, where he had been banished, exiled for his witness to Jesus Christ, received a vision which he committed to writing. Though removed from the forefront of the struggle, he is not silenced, he is not inactive. He sought through his writing to give testimony and to encourage his fellow Christians who were going through the great tribulation for their commitment to Jesus Christ. And maybe in the silence of the island of Patmos, away from it all in prayer, meditating on the risen Lord and his teachings, the vision came to him. One, in fact, can hear echoes of the gospel throughout the entire book if read carefully. Our text captures something of the hope and encouragement that John sought to give his fellow Christians in the face of suffering and death. In John's vision, we hear there is no limit to the numbers of those who are redeemed by God. Earlier in this same chapter, he writes of the 144,000 that were sealed, each tribe of Israel having the rounded number of 12,000 each. It is a number of friends representative of Israel alone. And then he cites that he looked and there was a great multitude which no one could know. The multitude he sees is to be known, it is to be noted, is made up of people from every nation, language, tribe, and race before God. They are from all corners of the globe. Not only is there salvation for Israel, but for all people, Jew and Gentile. God is the God of all people. All are included in the love of God and promise fellowship with God. There is no limit to the number of those who will be accepted by God in His love. All human beings are welcome to the throne of grace. 
With God, friends, there is no limits. We have limitations as human beings, physical beings. And in the church's Nicene Creed, we are reminded that God is the creator of all things seen and unseen, things visible and invisible. We know in our age that there is much that the naked eye cannot see. Science and technology is teaching us this every day. We are limited by time and space. We age with the years and we die. And we can only be at one place at a time. But God is not a creature of time and space. He's not limited by time and space. God is infinite, eternal. Human language, like the language of scripture, seeks to describe the indescribable, in a sense, the unknown. By that which we have our own symbols. John's vision of the end is founded on one thing, the knowledge of God's love revealed in Jesus Christ, who comes to us and will not forsake us even in death. There is in the realm of God space for all. And this resonates with the words of the Gospels. Jesus says, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. There is enough room for all. This is the promise of Jesus to all his disciples that where he is, they may be also. All are gods. And God has room for all. There is no limit to God's power and capacity to embrace us all who die in Him. God is not limited. There is room enough in God's plan. So as we come, we believe that all who die in Christ are in God's keeping. And so today we commit our brother Russell to God's keeping. After this sign moment, and there was a great multitude which no one could come, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. In John's vision, those around the throne are standing. That they are standing is significant, as these are they, as the chapter records, who have come out of the great tribulation, the great ordeal. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We know too that they're not just standing, they are acting, worshiping God and the Lamb. The image, friends, is not one of defeat, but of victory. They have overcome the tribulation. All that they had been through, we would have thought that they would have appeared with the marks of their wounds as testimony of their tribulation. They had been tortured, rent asunder, and executed for their faith. Yet, they do not appear before the throne, battered and bruised, blind or lame, but standing. They stand before the throne healed of all the evil meted out to them, whole and victorious. They have a new existence, new bodies, we may say. John's vision is inspired by the knowledge of the risen Lord. And in the new life, there will be no more sickness, pain, or suffering. 
We will be healed and stand whole in the presence of God, is what John sees. Those around the throne sharing the divine light, the life of God, the eternal life. We believe that those who die in Christ will be raised with him to the life immortal. We shall be made new, we shall be changed. This is the hope that our brother shared as a member of the church. We are told that they would want no more. God will be their shelter in the land, their shepherd. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. God will care for them. Friends, in death, God does not cease to care for us is the message of revelation. In life or in death, we are God's. And God's love and care never ceases. Yes, we are on this side and we know what happens on this side. We really don't know what happens on the other side, but because of the risen Lord, we have hope. Therefore, we can be comforted that because Christ entered death and conquered death, our brother will be in God's keeping. God does not forsake us even in death. They cried out with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Salvation belongs to God and to the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. The good news is that salvation belongs to God. It is God's gift. It is God to give and not ours to achieve. It is not founded upon us in any way. Because I dare to say that none of us are perfect. None of us. We cannot earn God's grace by our good behavior. Our salvation has been made possible because of God's action in Jesus Christ who has conquered death and the grave and opened the way for our salvation, our eternal fellowship with God. Though they who stand around the throne have come through great tribulation, they have come through because of God's goodness, of God's love and mercy. They stand before the throne because of the blood of the Lamb, Christ's sacrifice, gift of himself for the world, who has made it possible for them to do so. The victory, friends, is always ours in Christ Jesus. It is God's gift that he gives to all of us. I want to believe that our brother Russell, who I met in church, not here but in another place, and who I discovered as I have heard through the tributes, what I experienced was one who gave of himself, was generous. And I want to believe that that spirit of generosity, of service, of giving of himself was born out of our knowledge of the goodness and mercy and love of God. God comes in love and invites us into his fellowship. Russell, I believe, knew something of that love and so in all his endeavors, he never forgot God 
and made it as far as possible his duty to play his part with the people of God and serve community and nation. But the foundation, as I experienced him, was his faith in God. Ultimate salvation is not something we can achieve. It is God's gift to us. And as we receive of that gift, we give of ourselves in the service of God and others. It is God's gift to us. So Jesus says to his disciples, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. God is the giver of salvation. God is love. And this, with this we can trust God. Even as we grieve the loss of our world, we can trust God. And we can commit our brother Russell to God's mercy and love. Knowing that with God all things are well. Friends, as we meet, let us remember that there is no limit to God's power, to God's capacity. God makes all things new, and salvation is God's gift. <coughs> we thank God for us, for who He was among us, for the way in which He touched our lives. We lay him to rest with trust in a loving God to whom salvation belongs and who calls us <coughs> into an eternal fellowship with himself. And now we pray that he may find rest and peace in the eternal presence of his maker, God. Let us with confidence and hope confess the faith in which we were baptized as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered upon his fire, was crucified, and right as that. Let us pray for our brother, Russell O'Brien. Let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. 
Draw near to us who mourn for Russell O'Brien and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Raise our brother, Russell McBride, to eternal life. You promise paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother, Russell O'Brien, to the joys of heaven. Our brother, Russell O'Brien, was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit, giving him fellowship with all your saints. Yes, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother, Russell O'Brien. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Yes. Father of all, we pray for Russell O'Brien and for all whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace.
Lord who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and the drink of the body of God and your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly life. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort, the affliction, and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crime, but the fullness of joy and glory of through Jesus Christ our Savior.
Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Russell O'Brien. Acknowledge we have received you, a sheep of your own food, the lamb of your own flock, a sin of your own redeeming. Receive into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of the last in peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Depart, O oh Christian soul, out of this world, in the name of God the Father who created you. In the name of God the Son who redeemed you. In the name of God the Holy Spirit who sanctifies you. May your journey into paradise be in peace. Into paradise, may the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Which wounded thee, 
from death's dread sting thy servants free that we may Come on, intro, intro video. <laughs> <laughs> 